Good evening, teacher. Okay, everybody, welcome to the class. How are you today? More or less ready for rock and roll. 
As usual, we are going to check the platform first. So this is the class for today. Class number 19 provides suggestions to solve common issues related to the warehouse. And we have here below the question based on one of the classes that we had already. Okay, we are going to check the attendance. That's the next step, of course. So let's see how it goes. Ada Patricia Linares Galdamez. Present teacher. Adriana Stephanie Martinez Flores. Ana Selmi Chavez. Flor de Maria Carballo Ugarte. Gloria Elizabeth Linares Galdamez. Here. Good. Guadalupe del Carmen Lopez Flores. Carla Verónica Vázquez de Rivas. Lourdes Beatriz Iraeta de Miranda. Okay. Mayra Melanie Guevara de Beltrán. Present teacher. Yeah. Ofelia Orellana Arce. Sí. Okay. Good. Osmin Baire Solorzano. Pamela Beatriz Posada Reina. Yes, thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Rafael Ernesto González Ventura. Present. Good evening. Good evening. Ricardo Alexis Fuentes Rodríguez. Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. Sandra Gladys Méndez Ramírez. William Giovanni Rosales Galvez. Yancy Lisbeth Hernández Mejía. Zulma Rosaura López García. Present. Good. Nelson Edgardo Sánchez Ramírez. Ana Michelle Guevara. Susana Carolina Hernández Iraeta. Okay, we are going to start. Presentation. Okay, good night. Okay. Uh, this is it. Okay, so we are going to start the class of today. If you need to have your dinner, of course, you can do it in English. <laughs> so enjoy if you are eating and uh, we're going to check into well, we're going to start with the presentation first. Today we're going to move a lot, a lot, since there is a lot of time available. Okay, we're gonna start with the warehouse management statistics. What is an statistic, anybody? What is statistic? Uh -huh. This is the chance for you to practice. So, in your own words, what is statistic? Nobody. Okay, statistic is kind of math that you use whenever you want to see trends, calculate rates and things like that, right? So we're going to start, it says global e-commerce. Uh, Guadalupe, could you please read the first paragraph? is not possible. Pamela, could you please read the first paragraph? Yes. 
¿Cuál? Mira. Um, warehouse Manager Statistics. Global economy comments has grown rapid, 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 rapid and recent year and the expected to the top 29 trillion by uh, 2022, 23, accelerating a need for for more warehouse space to match growing consumer demand. Uh, demand performance growth is expect, expected to increase demand for USA where warehouse space by 1 million square feet by 2025 is it is not super surprising that one could it by drug publication logistic manager from uh, 79% of warehouse oper operation. We're planning some type, type of spatial plan. Good. So what do you understand on this one? I don't know. Okay, this is like an introductory, right? It says global e-commerce has grown rapidly. So it's growing. The industry of the warehousing is growing very fast in recent years. And it says that it's expected to top $29 trillion buying how much money is that one 29 trillion dollars by next year so that is a lot actually getting a need for more warehouse space to match growing consumer demand okay. so people are buying a lot of things so it's expanding all the businesses and it's expanding the warehouse as well E-commerce growth is expected to increase demands for U.S. warehouse space by 1 billion square feet. So imagine that. So the U only in the U.S., only in the U.S., the warehouse space is going to be around 1 billion square feet by 2025. So that is a lot, a lot actually. It's not surprising that one survey by trade publication logistic management found 79% of warehouse operations were planning some time as an expansion plan. What is an expansion plan? Anybody? What it might be that expansion plan? Uh, yes, teacher, a special plan is um, the big uh, launcher. Okay, and yeah. In every country. Mm -hmm. So expansion plan is when they plan to be bigger, to grow, right? So 79% of warehouses operations, that's, that is almost everybody. Almost everybody is planning, at least in the US, to grow, to have more space so they can handle more products in their warehouses. That is stunning. Very good. Pamela, could you please read the second paragraph? Yes, um, even, even this wrong space by warehouse operation is the inability to attract and retain a qualified early, early workforce. They improve producti productivity, reduce operation costs, and keep up with customer demand, all while combining 
tie space and a tie labor market. Warehouse operations are increasingly using technology to automate, automate process with 85% uh, using uh, WMS according to the logistic management survival. Okay, so what did you understand on this one, Pamela? Uh, well, it says about um, uh, the what, um, on how the automate, automate, automatization process can also be a possibility to to reduce a, a lot of. Um, a lot of things that maybe a uh, uh, different uh, we can didn't we we didn't sorry uh, improve what is it said about improving productivity and reduce operation cost. Very good. That was very interesting. Thank you. So yes. So since everybody is growing, so they they are expanding. A top challenge faced by warehouse operation is the inability to attract and retain a qualified hourly workforce. So at this point, what is workforce? Hourly workforce, what do you understand on that one? What is hourly workforce? So it's about people working, right? So what it says there that they have plans to expand, to grow, but it, one of the biggest challenges is the inability to attract and retain qualified people to work. So, I mean, this kind of work to move things, to uh, be there in the heart or with, I mean, different, situations, different conditions, sometimes it's not what people are looking for work. So that is a big problem they have to attract and retain people that know about this work. To improve productivity, reduce operating costs and keep up with customer demand, all while combating tight space and tight labor market. Yeah, that is true. What is tight? Do you know what is tight? No, okay, tight is something that is very, the grip is very tight. So it's very, there is no space for you to move. Something is like tight. So in this case, it says while, so you need to reduce uh, the cost and improve productivity. And also at the same time, uh, you need to, to look for more space and look for more labor markets. Uh, so look for more people willing to work in this area. So warehouse operations are increasingly using technology to automate processes. And so that, as Pamela said, is one of the one of the things that the strategies that warehouse uh, people, warehouse operations are looking to do. With 85% using WMS. What is WMS? Do you remember? Oh. Warehouse management. That Very good. That mm -hmm. Perfect. So it's the warehouse management system according to the logistics management survey. So, well, this is like statistics about this one. Let's move on. Okay, then it says choosing a warehouse management system at WMS. Osmin, could you please read the first one? It's okay, teacher. <clears throat> Choosing the right WMS will depend on the specific of your warehousing operation and that you want to achieve. Above all, the right WMS 
it could help your organiz organization achieve great, greater efficient and fully orders order more accurately, accurately so you can do more at a lower cost sign up primary a goal a goal is to save money there's o a escape good what do you understand on this one uh, chosen the rice is 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 good in in, in the future is before the future and in operation system is important for mm, I, I don't understand I now understand teacher No, listen, teacher. Sorry about that. So, uh, yeah, choosing the right system is going to depend on your need, on the need of the customer. So, uh, there are many systems around the world. How to choose one? Of course, that depends on what I need. So that is very basic. Then it says, um, above all, what is above all, anybody? I remember. Okay, above all is above all. So on the top, something Max. like that. So the right WMS should help your organization achieve greater efficiency. So that is what we're looking to do with the system to achieve greater efficiency and fulfill orders more accurately. So efficiency and accuracy are some things that we need. So you can do more at a lower cost and of course money, right? So we can get more profit and reduce our cost. Since a primary goal is to save money, ROI is key. ROI is an indicator about the rotation of the operation. So that is vital on this kind of things. So let's move on. The next one is going to be for, let's say, lower this, please. Okay. Uh, additionally. Yes, please. Okay. Additionally, uh, WMS should act as a guide to help all warehouse staff become more efficient in the workplace. To do so, the right WMS will provide real time action, actionable. 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 Thank you. Insights into each aspect of your warehousing operation to help staff be more efficient and programmatic, including receiving, shipping, inventory, order fulfillment, and labor on labor, while providing easy to understand statistics and reports that managers and workers can easily understand and then use to improve daily and long-term processes. A WMS should also be scalable so it can help your business grow and adapt to changing market conditions. Good, what did you understand on this one? There is a lot of information here. Mm. Um, the the management uh, warehouse um, help to to 
more efficient the warehouse and and the the management uh, we um, mm -hmm, will provide a action that uh, based in aspect for example a program or control about a uh, receiving shipping inventory and uh, also provide a, a statistic about a, about a improve for example a, the daily a, receive or 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 efficiently the warehouse very good very complete that was very very nice so let's check some uh, things here. Additionally, a WMS should act as a guide. So it should be like, like a light for you, where you need to go, what you need to do. It's a guide to help all warehouse staff become more efficient in the workplace. To do so, the right WMS will provide real-time actionable insights. So real-time means that you are able to see in uh, real time what is going on okay each aspect on your warehousing operation to help staff be more efficient and programmatic what is to be programmatic anybody mm, i think it referred about a uh, more control uh, of inventory for example okay very good so yeah programmatic is like um when you do the same procedure once and again so you need uh, you know what to do what is first what is second what is next so everything is like in the real process right so it's pro programmed for that to happen that way including receiving so there are all the stages okay receiving shipping inventory order fulfillment and labor. Do you remember what is labor? Labor, I'm sorry. What is labor when we refer to this? Very good. It's about workers, right? People that are working into this one. Nice. So while providing easy to understand statistics, and reports that managers and workers can easily understand. So maybe the system is complex, but the reports have to be clear and easy to understand. And then just to improve daily and long-term processes. A WMS should also be scalable. Do you remember what is scalable? Okay, scalable is uh, when then anything is ready to, to be bigger, to expand, but very fast. So sometimes you say, we, we need one warehouse. But then you say, well, you know, tomorrow we're going to need two warehouses. Okay, they say, we're going to provide you more space. So that is scalable. So it can help your business grow and adapt to changing market conditions. So that is it. Ada Patricia, could you please read the last one? Yeah, the right WMS can take your warehouse operation to a higher level of efficiency, speed, and order accurate, helping to improve your company's competitiveness and increase customer satisfaction while keeping operating costs down. What do you understand on this one? I don't know, the company need competitive uh, um, no, no, uh, the clients, 
the customer satisfaction. Ay. Okay, very good. Thank you. So yeah, the right system, the right WMS system can take your warehouse operation to a higher level of efficiency. So if your warehouse works nice, with a nice system, it's going to be much better. It's going to be running smoothly. Uh, speed and order accuracy, helping to improve your company's competitiveness and increase customer satisfaction while keeping operation, operating costs down. So if you have a very good system, it's going to help you with everything, every single thing. You're going to be faster, more efficient. You're going to have more profit. You're going to have your customers happy. So it's a win-win situation. Of course, the investment. Okay, it seems that, okay, no, we finished this part already. And now we're going to continue with the book. Okay, this is a little bit of grammar, okay? So how to use transitions of result? So we have transition of results here. So let's check together onto this one so we can understand. It says, look at the examples in the box then complete the exercises below. Flor, could you please help us reading? Yes, teacher. Uh, the when? From transitions, help con connect ideas. Uh, transition help connect ideas. In this case, this transition connect a result to the action that cause, cause. Okay, please continue. When the, transi the transition is a pos posi position. position between two clouds, Pun punctuation can be as follows. The label's information was grown as a Consequence, the packets were put in the correct bins. Okay, let's continue. The products were not properly packed. As a result, they were damaged. The vendors miss, missed the delivery date. Consequently, the retailer asked for a reimbursement. Okay. We, did, we didn't know there were dangerous chemicals Chemical. in the chip, chemicals? Chemicals. Chemicals in the shipment. As a result, some workers had to to go to the hospital. There were no worker safe wilderness. Therefore, we trained the staff in safe procedures. Very good, perfect. So let's check into the grammar, okay? Transitions help connect ideas. So that is the purpose of transitions. So all everything that is in a, uh, in a right hand is going to be a transition idea. So it's going to help us to connect two different ideas. In this case, this transition connect a result to the action that caused it. So that's what we are using this one. So we are expressing a result of one action that happened before. So it says, when the transition is positioned between two clauses, punctuation can be as follows. So here is very important, the punctuation, okay? The first one, it says the label information was wrong. As a consequence, the packages were put in the incorrect bins. So we have two clauses here. The first clause, the first idea is the label information was wrong. And the consequence of that one, the packages were put in the incorrect bins. 
So in this case, we have the first clause and a period, okay? The label information was wrong, period. As a consequence, so as a result, so the consequence of that one, comma, the comma is very important. The packages were put in the incorrect bins. So we have the two clauses and the ones that connect the two clauses is as a consequence. Do you have any questions with the first one? No question. Uh -huh. Okay, no, no, teacher. No, no question is, I remember the reading. Mm -hmm. The lever information was wrong. I, as a, con, as a consequence is transition. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good. That is it. So uh, whenever we see something like that, for first of all, we need to remember that this is, the second one is a consequence of the first clause. And also remember that we need to have the correct, the correct punctuation, right? That is very important. Uh, what is bins? It says put in the incorrect bins. Do you remember what is a bin? Okay, bins are the places where we put in the warehouse all the products. So that is the bin, okay? The second option says, or the second example, it says the products were not properly packaged, period. Can you see? Period, that is very important. As a result, comma, they were damaged. So they were damaged as a consequence of the first clause, the product were not properly packaged. So it's going to be very easy, very simple. Uh, do you have any questions on the second one? No, it's clear. It's kind of clear, right? The next one, it says, the vendors missed the delivery date. So in this case, can you see that we don't use a period, we use a semicolon. So the vendors missed the delivery date, semicolon. Consequently, comma, the retailer asked for a reimbursement. So the first one is the cows. The vendors miss the delivery date. The second one is the effect. The retailer asked for a reimbursement. And the word that puts that together is the transition word. Okay, consequently. I guess this is also kind of, kind of clear. What is reimbursement? Do you remember? No, 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 I don't remember. When you return in? That is it. Reimbursement is when you request your money back, when you want your money because of something that happened. So you receive a reimbursement, money back guarantee. Okay, uh, do you have any questions with this one? Let's check the other one. We didn't know there were dangerous chemicals in the shipment. So here we have again a semicolon, semicolon, and then as a result, so as a consequence, as the effect, comma, that is important, the comma, some workers had to go to the hospital. So the first one is the cause, and the second one is the effect. Uh, chemicals, what is chemicals, do you know? Uh, a raw material with, uh, with a component <laughs> so strong. Very good, that is chemical. So there are things that they put together to preserve things. So that's what it says. We didn't know there were dangerous chemicals. So the chemicals were very strong and they can affect your health. As a result, some workers had to go to the hospital in my end that. So that's not good, right? Questions on this one? 
No questions, teachers. Please. Good, perfect. And the last one, it says, there were no worker safety guidelines. Semicolon again. Therefore, comma, we train the staff in safety procedures. So the first one is a cause. And then there is the separation with a semicolon. Then the uh, transition word, comma, and then the effect. Okay. Safety. What is safety? Ooh, anybody? Security? No, no. Very good. It's about security, safety, right? And guidelines are like steps. So there were not steps for the safety. So they had to train the staff in safety procedures. Questions about this? Okay, so let's do the teacher, exercise. Teacher. Go ahead. Uh, uh, what's I mean? For regla general? For a general rule. A general rule? It's, um, um, como decirle? Se está hablando también de la ortografía y de la gramática, ¿verdad? Entonces, esto de tema es por regla general, así la puntuación y todo eso. Uh, yes, in this, when, okay. when we use transition words, yes. Mm -hmm. And when, okay. of course, this is when you use transition words between two clauses. Okay. So when we have this in two clauses, um, it's going to be like this. Punctuation is actually very important in English. So that's why we check we check into that one. And only use the this punctuation. When we have transition words between two clauses, yes. yes. Mm. Mm -hmm. So of course, for example, therefore it's possible to be used in a different context and the, the punctuation might be different. But if you have two clauses, one is the cause and the other one is the consequence, this is the punctuation that we need to use. Okay. Okay. Okay, so let's check this one. Uh, the first one it says we remove items from cartons and packages as a result, pickers are not able to find them when they need to. Mm -hmm. So how is going to be the punctuation? How do we change this one? According to what we checked in the book, how is it going to be? The first, mm -hmm. uh, we remove items from cartoons and packages. Uh, that. Very good. Uh -huh. As a result, comma, pickers are not able to find them when they need to. Perfect. That is it. So we removed items from cartoons and packages, period, right? Yes. As a result, comma, pickers are not able to find them when they need to. Good. So that is it. Let's see if there is any word cartons. What is a carton? Do you know? Mm, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Cartons, uh, we can say, for example, a carton of milk. So when we put that kind of uh, liquids into that one, it's a carton. And of course, you know what is packages. Okay. Number two, it says the vendor is shipping multiple items in a single box. Consequently, we have to waste time to open the box, count the items, and rebox them. Uh, without the punctuation, it's kind of weird. So how is going to be the punctuation here? The vendor is shipping multiple items in a single box point. Consequently, comma, we have to waste time to open the box, comma, count the item and rebox them. 
Very good, perfect, that is it. So yes, you can use a semicolon or you can use a period. So that will be this one, okay? The vendor is shipping multiple items in a single box, semicolon or period. Consequently, comma, we have to waste time to open the box, count the items and re-box them. That is not a good situation, can you see? The vendor is shipping multiple items in a single box. So because the supplier put a lot of things in one box, we don't know. We don't know how many, what is the I mean, amount. So we need to open the box and count the items and rebox them. What is to rebox? Anybody an idea on what is to rebox? No, teacher. To rebox is to put again in boxes something. So we open the box and put out of the box the things, and then we have to put again into the box the item. So that is rebox. Mm -hmm. Good, so number three, it says the warehouse doesn't have enough ducts. Therefore, we have to put products in the aisles. So how is going to be the punctuation in here? In the number three, uh, yes. the warehouse doesn't have enough ducts, a semicolon, therefore, comma, we have to put products in the aisles. Very good. So that is it. The warehouse doesn't have enough ducts, uh, semicolon, therefore, comma, we have to put products in the aisles. Perfect. Uh, it says the warehouse doesn't have enough ducks. What is a duck? Not a duck, but a duck. <laughs> Do you remember this, this word? We checked that already. Okay, the duck is uh, in the warehouse where you put the vehicle, when you park the vehicle open and there you put the products into the vehicle. That is the duck, that place specifically in the warehouse. So it's like, you know, uh, where the trailers or uh, the trucks, they park and the, the back side of the truck is there into the warehouse and then you will be able to put everything inside of the container. So that is the duck. And it says, therefore we have to put products in the aisles. What is aisles? The pronunciation of this word is aisles. No, we do not pronounce the first S. So, so the question is, what aisles. is aisles? Uh -huh. Anybody knows? Passillos. Very good, that is it. So it's like a corridor, right? So like in the supermarket, those are aisles where you are going through the supermarket. Very good. The last one, it says the conveyor belt broke as a consequence there is not enough stuff to put arriving packages away. So how is going to be the punctuation?
Anybody? The punctuation. In this case, the conveyor belt broke, period, as a consequence, comma, therefore is not enough stop to put arriving packages away. Very good. That is the punctuation. So conveyor belt broke, period. As a consequence, there is not enough stuff. Well, as a consequence, comma, there is not enough stuff to put arriving packages away. Good. Uh, do you know what is a conveyor belt? That is all together. Conveyor belt. Okay, so that is like, how can I explain that in English? In a machine, uh, do you remember when we saw about Amazon, the warehouse? So there was like a, a band that was moving on and you put there the products and then the products uh, are moving there in the band. So that band, the name of that band is the conveyor belt, that is it. So what it says here is that that conveyor belt, that band broke. As a consequence, there is not enough stuff to put arriving packages away. So the machine got broken and we need everybody to help to put away packages. Uh, do you remember what is to put away? Put away, that is a phrasal verb. Do you remember what is the meaning of that? Anybody? No, teacher, I don't know. Okay. To put away is to keep something in their place. So, for example, when you come from the supermarket, you put away the groceries in their refrigerator. So, that is a good example. Or you say, I will put away the keys in my pocket. So, put away is to put something in a in the right place. So that is it. Good, do you have any questions about this part? No. Clear as orchata, good. So we're not gonna check into that one. So um, this grammar is very important. Punctuation in English, is very important. So uh, this is these are topics that we usually check in the last levels of English. So that's why sometimes it's kind of here for us to check. And uh, then it says number seven, building vocabulary. Label the warehousing processes using the words from the box. And we have inbound processes, layout and slotting, picking, Packing, shipping, managing returns. So these are the words that we're going to check with the processes here. So what we're gonna do is we're going to read each of those and then we're going to choose which one is the name of that process. Okay, so let's start all over. Ricardo, could you please read the first one? <clears throat> Hello, Ricardo. Ricardo is at the supermarket. Okay, let's see. Uh, now, uh, let's check here. Uh, Gloria, could you please read the number one? Okay. Your order must uh, be packed in the right packaging, complete with accurate, a contact a slip and others to a delivery manifest to this package. Very good. So your orders must be packed in the right packaging. So that is only the first step. 
complete with an accurate content slip. So what is a content slip? Anybody? Content slip, what is that? Is the product in the in the bowels? No. Some like that actually. So you will be able to put like the information on that one. So in front, right? So uh, the content slip and add it to a delivery manifest to dispatch. Do you remember what is a manifest? Is a document oh, right. where uh, where there the information about the the track, for example. Very good. The manifest is a document that shows the information about uh, everything that we are delivering, right? In the in the truck, in the trailer, in the container. So uh, all the information is there. So there is no need for anybody to open that one. Dispatch, what is dispatch? Like a chip. Mm, like, a, like a chip, you say like a micro microchip or something like that? No, when you send a, a product, for example, Oh, a ship, ship, when you ship out something. Yes. Very good, that is it, ship, nice. So what will be the one for this one? Your orders must be packed in the right packaging, complete with an accurate content slip and add it to a delivery manifest to dispatch. What do you believe is this one? Shaping, no. It could be shipping, yeah. yeah. I guess nice. that would be good, nice. Okay, number two, Adriana. Could you please read that one? Hello, Adriana. Not here. Rafael, could you please help us with number two? Okay. This good need to be unloaded and then check it off against the original order and the information has to be logged against the customer's account. So good it says this good need to be unloaded. So it was loaded on the system and now it needs to be unloaded and then checked off to check off. Do you know what is to check off? Mm. When you uh, have a, a page and you select uh, a different items, for, for example. Okay, when you review about uh, the items, very good. Uh, against the original order, so you compare with the original order and the information has to be logged against the customer's account. So it has to be recorded on the customer's account. So what will be this one? What do you think? What do you think? Mm. Yeah. Managing return? No. Uh, managing returns. Mm, maybe, it's maybe to be honest, but we need to check the other ones. It's a possibility, yeah. Other people, what do you think? Inbound process? Inbound processes, yes. That actually is, is a little bit better because you need to 
check about the items that we received. Good. So let's see. Um, Carla, could you please read the number three? Hello, Carla. Hello, teacher. Uh, yes, could you please help us with the number three? Okay. I think need to be checked and logged as they are received and put away in the correct bins or package of dispatch without visual storage. Good. So items need to be checked. So we receive items and needs to be checked and logged. So record in, uh, in the inventory, right? As they are received and put away. So they are received, look at this. Received and put away in the correct bins. So I should remember the bins are the places where we put the inventory, right? Or packed for dispatch without further storage. So it's going to be ready for that to be shipped out. What will be the number three? And it's a it's a reference about control of a product in a storage. Definitely, it's about that one. So it's going to be uh, which of the ones about inbound process, layout and slotting, picking, packing, managing returns. What do you think? Uh, uh, is basic the control uh, workflow the workflow uh, finally the process at the dispatch uh, uh, product in their warehouse okay yes uh, but from the ones that we have here which one would be the right name for ah, this computer sorry mm -hmm. Mm -mm. I don't know, but I think packing. Packing, mm, but packing is when you are packing some products. I guess this one actually is inbound in process. process. Yeah, oh, yes. process. that's the one. This is inbound process. Very good. Okay, uh, Michelle. Could you please help us with number four? Well, I don't know if it's possible. Yes. Uh, the number four says it must be easy for your pickers to find items and their journey time between items and between orders should be minimized. Okay, so it must be easy for your pickers to find items and their journey time between items and between orders should be minimized. So the time that they walk to pick the items and to get them is going to be uh, minimized. So uh, journey, what is journey? Your daily work. I'm sorry? The day or the all day? Um, well, actually, journey is like the way for you to to walk. It's like a trip. So it's like the uh, whenever a person in the warehouse is going uh, to pick the items and then coming back. So that will be the journey in this situation. Items and then between us should be minimized. So what is going to be number four? Speaking. Picking, yeah, I believe this is picking. Very nice. Um, we have shipping, picking, and we have inbound processes. And the number two, we don't know yet. Number five, um, let's see. Uh, Mayra, could you please read number five? Yes. Fast moving items need to be near the front of the warehouse. Items that are 
of often both together need to be close to each other. Items that are easily mistaken for each other should be separated. Very good. So it says fast moving items. So items that we need to, to put out of the um, warehouse very fast need to be near the front of the warehouse. Of course, that is a logical thing. So it's going to be easier for you to move the products. Items that are often bound together need to be close to each other. So that is like, if they are similar, you need to put them together. And items that are easily mistaken for each other should be separated. So items that are very similar needs to be separated. So what will be this one? Packing. Packing. Um, it could be, yeah. Actually, it's probably better layout and slotting. That would be, I guess, the best option. Uh, let's check number six is going to be four. Let's see. Four. Four has a red. Sell me, please. Number six, teacher. Yes, please. The right order must be on the right call at the right time with the right delivery manifest. Very good. I guess this is very clear, right? The right orders must be on the right vehicle at the right time with the right delivery manifest. What will be this one? Managing return? No. Um, it's not managing returns. So what will be this? Shipping? Shipping actually is, is good for this one, right? So yeah, I guess we need to analyze all of them together. So everything is going to be a little bit clearer. Uh, anyways, uh, let me just check. Oh, it's time for us to check the attendance. Uh, basic reports or so, sympathetic analysis. Just straight on. No, we're not gonna do this. Okay. Yeah, sometimes the exercises here are like the university. <laughs> okay, so before we move on to this one, we are going to check the attendance. Okay, um, Ada, Patricia, Linares, Galdames. Present. Good. Adriana, Stephanie, Martinez, Flores. Ana, Salmi, Chavez. Present teacher. Good. Flor de Maria, Carballo, Ugarte. Present. Good. Eh, Gloria, Elizabeth, Linares, Galdames. Here. Good. Guadalupe del Carmen López Flores. Present teacher. Good. Carla Verónica Vázquez de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Lourdes Beatriz Iraeta de Miranda. Present. Good. Mayra Melanie Guevara de Beltrán. Present. Good. Ofelia Orellana Arce. Here teacher. Good. Osmin Baire Solórzano. Present teacher. Good. Pamela Beatriz Posada Reina. Good evening, present. Good evening. Rafael Ernesto González Ventura. Present. Good. Ricardo Alexis Fuentes Rodríguez. Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. Sandra Gladys Méndez Ramírez. William Giovanni Rosales Galvez. Yancy Lisbeth Hernández Mejía. Zulma Rosaura López García. Present. Good. Nelson Edgardo Sánchez Ramírez. Present. Good. Ana Michelle Guevara. Present. Good. Susana Carolina Hernández Iraeta. Present. Good. Ah, perfect. So, 
Okay, my friends. Now uh, we're going to check two videos just to, to check some details here, okay? Uh, it's gonna be these and it's gonna be, let me just check. Okay, this is the first one. Okay, so as usual for the videos, we're going to watch, try to understand, and then at the end, we're going to provide uh, comments or opinions about this one, what you understood, okay? So here we go. This company packs and delivers 100,000 grocery orders to hungry New Yorkers every week. Fresh Direct's process of shipping highly customized grocery boxes straight to customer stores cuts the grocery supply chain in half. And it all happens from this facility in the Bronx, the size of 11 football fields. We're a super high velocity grocery store, so we're receiving lots of food every day. It's coming in, going right back out. But getting a box like this delivered on time to the right door is a logistical nightmare. When you think about millions of items that are coming in and going out of this building in a single week, there's a lot of complexity around that. Normally, it takes a team of 3,200 people and a sophisticated AI system up with a wild spike in orders. In the pandemic, a lot of people just kind of scared to go outside and we help eliminate the scariness. We visited the Fresh Direct facility in early September to see how the company manages on-time delivery in the face of pandemic demand. Today is actually the busiest day we'll have had since January. So as people return to school and people return back home from their vacations from the summer, they tend to stock up heavily. Fresh Direct began delivering groceries to New Yorkers back in 2002. At the time, the model was revolutionary. Fresh Direct's supply chain is just three steps. From the farm into our building directly to the consumer's house. The new model cuts out three to four steps from the normal grocery store supply chain. Customers can fill carts and order online or through the app. Just like a regular grocery store, Fresh Direct sells everything from toothpaste and toilet paper to produce, fresh meats, and prepared meals. If you think about a normal produce selection, you might find two or 300 different types of produces. We have anywhere from four to 600, depending on the time of the year. About 65% of our product is what we consider fresh, be it meat, seafood, or deli, or from our kitchen, or fresh produces and, and cheeses and such. Today, Fresh Direct sources from over 100 partner farms across the world. All that food comes into Fresh Direct's headquarters here in the Bronx. Today, we have about 120 trucks inbound. Over a million pounds of produce come through the receiving area each week. From Hepworth Farms, we're getting everything from these cherry tomatoes that you saw, to these beef steaks, to these tomatillas. This load of fresh berries will be in the building for less than 24 hours. First, the incoming inventory is checked for quality and quantity, and then put into the tracking system. So you can see he's putting out these labels, and I captured all that information on that barcode. And what happens from here is we're actually directing the food to where it has to go. So in that system, it knows those tomatoes, what place they have to go within the warehouse. Next, the new inventory is moved to all the appropriate fridges or storage areas. Pantry and shelf-stable goods are forklifted onto these giant inventory walls. Some goods are moved through this facility in as little as an hour and a half. But you can actually read the dates on those labels, and you'll see they're all about a week or less old. What's insane is the speed at which it moves. Fresh produce ends up in temperature-controlled fridges. There are 38 different temperature zones throughout this facility. For example, bananas, they like about 65 degrees. They like a certain amount of humidity. A traditional grocery store is built with temperatures that make human shoppers happy. You as a consumer could walk into a bricks and mortar grocery store in the middle of the summer in shorts and flip flops and be totally comfortable. It's not good for the food because it detracts from the shelf life. There's no food on display here. All that food is tucked away on ice in the proper temperature and is only taken out when it's needed. So we just have less waste as opposed to a bricks and mortar store. Fresh Direct says catering to a food's ideal climate extends its shelf life up to seven days beyond a traditional grocery stores. We have a room that's at, at 55 degrees for things like tomatoes. We have a room at 45 degrees for things like onions and potatoes. They're like colder temperatures. There's a separate inventory room for meat and even fish. This fish is probably two days out of the water and it's here from Nova Scotia. So our fishermen, they actually go out, these are harpoon caught swordfish. 368 pounds. Yeah, it's, it's fat. The supply chain has such a tight turnaround that a customer could place an order for a fish in, say, Alaska, and within a day or two, it'll be fished out and flown to this facility. There are times where we could sell fish to a consumer five days out that's not actually landed in a boat yet. Once all the items are inventoried, they don't sit around long before they're picked up and tugged to one of 12 kitchens. Fruits and veggies for pre-cut packages are chopped in one room. 
Upstairs, the bakery starts buzzing in the early morning. Downstairs, we could do anywhere from 13 to 18,000 finished goods per day. These chefs make more than 500 different prepared dishes. In the cold room, they're pulling together shrimp cocktails, ravioli, cheese boards, and salads. In the hot room, it's salmon, stews, chicken fingers, and one of the most popular items, rotisserie chicken. Down the hall, fish are filleted. Yeah, Hoovy actually also has some black cod right there, also known as butterfish or sable fish out of British Columbia. Hoovy, how many years cutting fish? 28 years. On a promo, he'll cut close to 1,000 pounds of fish a day. And here, over 250 cuts of meat are butchered a day. They're sliced right as orders come in to help cut down on food waste. But when COVID-19 hit, meat orders spiked so much, the team had to lessen the variety of meat cuts until they could catch up with the demand. We took a look at that volume and said, okay, these are the steaks that we have the most volume on. These are the steaks that we're going to feature. Once workers finish preparing all the food, the real work begins, pulling all the items for an order together. The average order Fresh Direct gets is about 30 items, which might not sound like a lot, but... On a relatively busy week now, we're delivering to north of 100,000 houses, and if each of those houses has 30 items in their delivery, we're moving 3 million different food items out of, in essence, one mega facility. Each order that comes in gets assigned a box. To make sure all 30 items end up in the right box, the company has been perfecting an AI system for nearly two decades. The system tracks when each item comes in and the expiration date. Then it finds the most efficient route, along nine miles of conveyor belts, to move the box to all the right pick stations. Each pick station has one worker and a selection of products the worker grabs from and places in the corresponding box. This picker has pantry goods and toiletries at her station. So it tells her what item, she'll scan it, it'll verify it's the right item, she'll confirm that she put it in the customer's bag, and that will go to the next person. But you can see the speed with which you can pick these items. Rather than walking around a store all day, the work comes to her. But it isn't set up like a normal grocery store, where all the, say, tomato sauces are together. To even out the workload, high-ticket items like olive oil are paired with lower-ticket items like organic baby food at one pick station. We call it slotting the building, so the fewer stops that we make in our store with our, our totes as they go through, the more efficient we can be. The goods are also grouped at pick stations based on affinity. So the people that would buy this tea have an affinity to buying other products that are here, such as the lawn drink or the dry rosé cider. After a worker picks the right item, they hit a green button, and the order box zooms off to the next station. After visiting sometimes dozens of pick stations, an order can finally be complete. It goes through one last check before being loaded on a fresh direct truck. So as soon as the product gets here, our goal is to have it here less than two days and back out the door. So there's literally thousands and thousands of bags that go to shipping every hour. On the outbound side, there's over 400 trucks going out with deliveries. Those trucks run 2,000 routes each week. We've got a refrigerator in the back of the truck, so everything is already staying cold. John's a 12-year veteran driver for Fresh Direct. He typically does routes around New York City, but sometimes takes deliveries all the way out to the Hamptons. So I start at 4, and coming from the Hamptons, I'm getting back like 4, 4.30, so the traffic coming back is ridiculous. The pandemic caused an 800% surge in new website traffic and increased demand for Fresh Direct. But orders aren't just coming in from New Yorkers worried about leaving their apartments. A surprising amount of demand came from New Yorkers who fled to the suburbs. That's been a new area of growth for us. Even as demand spread out, Fresh Direct's hub and spoke model allowed the company to quickly ramp up delivery to more coverage zones. Fresh Direct expanded to New Jersey, Connecticut, Westchester County, and Long Island. By the end of 2020, the company plans to add a thousand new workers to match demand. Fresh Direct's success is indicative of a larger trend in shopping habits. In 2019, e-grocers held 3.4% of the grocery market. And in 2020, it's expected to hit 10.2%. Here we are in September, looking at probably the biggest growth we've ever seen. And just each month it gets bigger. And COVID-19 opened up the floodgates for online grocery. And I don't think we'll ever go back. Good. What did you understand on this one? What did you get? I know there's a lot of information, but what did you get? I take some notes and, for example, uh, the company received uh, 100,000 orders and the company worked 300 persons. Um, the customers uh, get the products online or uh, for the app and uh, paid 
uh, order products uh, through the online. Other point I understand is that the company has so much partners around the world and they have tracking numbers for the package or for the products uh, based in barcode. Um, another point I remember is that the, all the products or the fruits or food that they deliver must at the perfect temperature. Uh, uh, for para? Ah, for? For, for the old um, meat or fruits uh, stay in perfect um, estado? State. State. That's it. Very good. That's a lot of information. Thank you very much. Actually, that was very accurate and a lot of information that you, I mean, all the information that you provided was amazing. Good. Any other person wants to provide opinion on this one? Uh, teacher, it's amazing can see to the control that have in each product because all products have a different control, different packet, different kind of us way for conserver and, he, and they have a process for each product for this part for package and for their inventory. Yeah, it's amazing. You see the amount of, of food, I mean, too. To deliver, to handle food is not that easy. That's why I choose this video because it's about food. I mean, any other product is a little bit easier, but food, I mean, and, and you see that it looks very nice. The way that they cut the meat, the way that they handle everything is very good. So that- It's, it's amazing too, because in their, Stock have a, a perishable perishable product. That is true. I mean, I mean, I guess everything that they have is perishable, right? Because they have only food, different kinds of food, but only food, fruits, vegetables, meat, fish, um, and some other food that are also ready for you to eat. So that was good. Yes. Keep the keep the fruit, keep the meat, keep the chicken is very complicated because it's a perishable product. Yeah, definitely. That is is amazing actually. Good. Any other opinion? Anything that take your attention? Uh, it, there were many things. Uh, actually, I was thinking that he said that he had, they have there uh, 38 different rooms with different temperatures because it's not the same temperature for bananas than to onions, than tomatoes, of course, the meat, the shrimps. That was, I mean, a lot. Another thing that caught my attention is that he said that sometimes uh, somebody placed an order for the fish that still is in the ocean, it's still not in the warehouse. So you place an order and the fish is still there on the ocean. So they have to go and get it and in two days it's delivered. That is, I mean, that is fresh, right? <laughs> that is fresh. And um, yeah, I mean, this kind of things are, are kind of uh, amazing. I mean, also there was something else that caught my attention. They say that they use a system of IA. No, AI is it. What is AI? Do you remember that? By any chance, you know what is AI? Okay, actually that is artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. 
artificial no. intelligence. They have a system that by itself, you just go and pick the products and they press a button and then the, the system recognizes, oh, this is for that one and it goes to the right department so they can package everything and put in the vehicle. So uh, in this case, teacher, the condition of the facilities require a specific uh, condition for each type or kind of the food. And it's expected in, in this company is, is a specialized, specialized in the management of food. In compared and, with the other examples in the mm -hmm. other videos, the last videos that the management, the product are different. So definitely, I mean, mm -hmm. that is a one thing that it also is, is very good for anybody to do in the company or in your job or anything, to specialize, to be an expert in one thing. And that thing that you do very good. So that that is where the business is, right? So that is it. Good, good. Uh, we're going to watch another video. This is a little bit shorter. Let's see how it goes. Uh, as usual, we're going to pay attention and then we're going to discuss and provide opinions. Here we go. Our management system can be an exciting time for our business. The new technology and solutions are filled with possibility, but they also need some direction to work well with the new supply chain strategy. So if you're upgrading your warehouse capabilities, improving inventory control, or building an entire new storage unit, begin by exploring your new abilities and what you can do to save money, decrease loss, and make the most of your advanced system. First, use fixed and movable tracking options. When companies think of warehouse tracking, they think primarily of movable tracking options, tracking the units and pallets as they get moved around the warehouse and sent up the supply chain. This is only one part of the warehouse management process. Do not forget the benefits that come with used fixed trackers too. By tracking fixed warehouse assets, you are able to assign and manage destinations much more easily and arrange strategy protocols as needed without mass confusion. It's better to think of warehouse tracking in two different parts, one fixed and one movable. Second, eliminate lag with real-time information. Older inventory management systems suffered from a certain amount of lag delays between inventory movement and software updates that would show the movement taking place. You no longer need to suffer from lag with today's warehouse systems. Our services allow you to tag products that receive real-time updates on exactly where they are at all times. This increases the efficiency of management decisions and removes confusion in fast-paced supply environments. Real-time visibility to warehouse inventory and transactions reduce phone calls and emails verifying quantities. We regularly hear the excitement from accounts payable when they are able to see precise inventory receipts on the purchase order. Third, track high sellers. Your new warehouse inventory system will give you the ability to track orders and sales per client and per product. Do not let this information go to waste. Use it to track your high sellers and position them at locations that make picking and delivery extra easy. This will make your big clients even happier and help you save time as well. Sales volume is also the biggest factor in creating minimum and maximum stock levels to drive purchasing decisions. Many companies they may start with safety stock, but that's often a manual process. Robust inventory management software like QStock Inventory will dynamically factor sales volume, usage, and shifts in market demand to drive that purchasing recommendation. You may also use this information in your inventory counts. Faster moving product is more key to the customer and the company, so it should be cycle counted more frequently. More movement means more opportunity for change and more critical to have accurate stocking levels. Slower items have less chance for variance and are less impactful to the business, so you can save time counting the majority of your inventory. Fourth, remember personal identification. Sometimes companies get so excited about inventory tracking that they forget about employee tracking as well. If you are getting a new inventory or warehouse management system, consider including security protocols that make it easier to track employees too and recognize when non-employee individuals are on the floor for no reason. Mobile computers and barcode scanners attach a username, date, and time to every transaction. This information can be used to identify and reward the fastest and most accurate employees. It's also helpful when helping small businesses go back in time to look for damaged or lost inventory. Fifth, don't be afraid to reorganize your floor plan. 
Now that you have advanced tracking and software capabilities, do not be afraid to change your floor plan. Demand and production change, so why shouldn't your storage plans? If your business goes through notable changes that affect how and what products are managed, change your floor plan to match the new model rather than getting stuck in a rut. Distribution warehouses will often have a distinct path someone would follow. Warehouse management will identify the heaviest and fasting moving inventory to put at the front of the pick path. Lighter and slower moving inventory will move to the end of the pick path to prevent being crushed and save time picking. Sales volumes change season to season, so items should be frequently rotated to save time and prevent injury. Sixth, link accuracy with inventory levels whenever possible. Your new inventory management system will give you plenty of data on how products move around your warehouse. At first, all this information can seem a little overwhelming, but with the right type of analysis, specific solutions should emerge. Whenever possible, try to connect your newfound accuracy to inventory levels. This can be challenging for companies unfamiliar with inventory tracking, but this higher level strategy will lead to some of the most significant savings for your company. Let your inventory management software eliminate unnecessary inventory and shift orders to meet demand more accurately to really see results. Leverage barcode scanners to increase both speed and accuracy of data entry. The best warehouse inventory management systems will not just record what the user is doing, but direct them through the efficient warehouse operations workflows. By taking the responsibility off the user, training and onboarding can be reduced from weeks to hours, and each transaction can be reduced by 20%. Seventh, explore money savers like cross docking, wave picking, and other options. It's time for a little innovation. If you do not already practice cross docking, your warehouse management system should show you new opportunities to use this warehouse light option to save money. The same is true of wave picking, which is much easier to implement in complex shipping systems when you adopt advanced tracking methods. If you are currently running your distribution business on Sage Intact or QuickBooks, schedule a discovery call and demo to see if QStock Inventory is right for you as your next potential warehouse management system. Okay, what did you get on this video? I, I can see that that um, is very important uh, have a support, uh, support of technology for a management approval in a warehouse because it's very important now, uh, now the product, the position of product, the all inventory, new inventory, is a is a total control is it's very important have a, a system with a, with support with support to management very good yeah control in this kind of situations is uh, actually vital so we need to we need to check into that one and, and invest money into this kind of systems wms Okay, uh, any other? Or if you want to continue. I think that they make emphasis uh, talking about tracking, tracking the, the orders. The, those are seven tips. I, I don't get uh, to write something, but um, it's, amazing <laughs> i think that is amazing is is a it's a dream <laughs> for me because i i have many years working with inventory and i say oh my god i i wish i would i would like to the 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 company have a an amazing in that case, uh, warehouse manage management system is amazing. It, it talk about the employees, also about the employees. You can look, locate the employees. Mm -hmm. I, I, I see, I listen something. Yeah, and that I is say, true. Wow. Uh -huh. It says you can, you can identify if, if, the employee 
the employee is in a in a ground floor. I don't I don't but don't understand good, but I I listening that you can monitor the employees also. Yeah, actually, that is uh, something that is kind of different of all the tips that we have heard uh, along the the English classes, right? Um, almost all the the tips are like automate to implement software to control to track. But I, actually, I had two things that were kind of different. The first one was that so you can track your employees to identify which one is the best which one is the one that makes more mistakes so you can train them you can improve so yeah definitely that is that is something very good and the other thing that i liked is that yeah, he said that you can uh, if you have a, a customer that is the bigger customer that he purchased a lot you can put that in a, that uh, the product for that customer in a specific position. Uh, so it's going to be easier for you because he is the one that you are going to sell more. So he's the one that's going to purchase more products from you. So that one, it was different. I mean, we have checked that sometimes we have to separate products that are similar or to put together products that are uh, going to go to the same place or things like that, but that is a, an, an additional one. So that I liked it. Any other opinion, any other comments on this video? Okay, teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, it's good is it, uh, uh, the system, uh, the control with, with a, a throw uh, and software or system but 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 the company is a a great investment of money uh, and they also have to pay a support and and the and the maintain the, the software and, and for 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 me in the company is good in the software or, or, or the system but this is great great investment you are so true it's not easy is very complex and is very expensive. So of course, of course, if you have this level of technology, this level of system, this level of, of investment, I mean, the profit is a lot, right? So the money that the companies have, of course, is a lot of money. But of course, you have to invest. Invest not only in the software, in the system, but invest also in people right to train people to have people that are able to do their job to understand what they need to do and also that they are happy because uh well i guess that when you wake up in the morning if you say oh my goodness another day to go to my job so that is not good right of course i mean of course if you prefer if you have options to go to the beach or go to your job of course it's going to win the beach but if you go to your job and you're happy and you feel comfortable and you feel that you are doing something that is valuable also is important so that is also an investment to pay good salaries to have good insurance uh, to treat people nice is a very good investment so everything is important and these kind of large companies, that's why a lot of people, they look to get a job in large companies because they know that they are going to have a lot of benefits and they are going to, to be better. Well, sometimes, not always, but in the most of the cases, that's what happened. But you are so, so right. It's not easy and it's very, very expensive. Very good. Any other person? No teacher, only I, I think that, com that the company is, big, is very big. Uh, they have control. Uh, they have total control in machines, over and um, employees. Of course, uh, your cost. Very yes. good. Mm, go ahead. It, no, 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 teacher, it's good. Very good, perfect. Thank you, Osman. So, yeah, it's amazing, right, to see that there are companies like this. We're going to see one more video and then we're going to continue with the book because we have a lot of time today. 
And then uh, we're going to see two more videos uh, afterwards, not right now. So right now, just one more video. And let's discuss. This is a very good one, actually. So pay attention. And uh, at the end, of course, you are going to provide opinions and comments. Here we go. In this video, we'll show you the top 10 largest warehouses in the world you definitely get lost in. One of which is the Tesla warehouse in California with 500,000 square feet. It's one of the world's most advanced automotive factories with more than 200 robots, each carrying a name, mainly after X-Men superheroes. Built by United Motor Manufacturing in 1984 and bought by Tesla in 2008, with the help of 10,000 employees, the company can assemble here 100,000 cars per year. That's more than one quarter of Tesla's yearly production. Number nine goes to the Meyer Werft Warehouse. It is not just one of the largest, but also one of the oldest warehouses in the world. Starting from small wooden vessels in 1975, the warehouse today holds more than 700 different ships, including the greatest luxurious cruise liners made by the German company Meyer Werft. If you wanted to line up all of the boats stored in this warehouse, the line would be 132 miles long. The size of the warehouse now stands at almost 700,000 square feet and employs about 3,300 people. Tesco is one of the best known supermarkets in the UK and Ireland with more than 3,000 stores here. Naturally, Dublin became the best place for its biggest warehouse with a size of 830,000 square feet. The whole construction finished in 2007 and cost 70 million euros. Later in 2012, Tesco sold it for 120 million euros. It has a handling capacity of 1.5 million cases per week and employs over 600 people. This distribution center manages and distributes all grocery and some non-food products for Tesco Ireland's network of 106 stores. The most fascinating warehouse on our list would probably be the Morrison's Distribution Center in England, which belongs to Morrison's, the fourth largest chain of supermarkets in the United Kingdom. Plenty of nature protection projects have taken place during its construction, and much more has started since the end of it. Over 12,000 different types of insects and wildlife were moved to preserve the natural area. The facility was built in 2008 and started with its operations in 2009, now has about 920,000 square feet. Number six is Shaw National Distribution Center in England. The home of Shop Direct Group and the shipping company Yodel is a modern facility that saves over 1 million square feet of products ready for delivery. This warehouse is located in Shaw to the northeast of Manchester City Center and it employs about 2,000 people. It has undergone a lot of changes throughout the years to become the massive warehouse that it is today. But that still stands no chance amongst the gigantic warehouses you're about to see in a moment. Amazon Fulfillment Center is one of several in Britain where products are stored, picked up and packaged before being shipped around the globe. But there is just one that made it on our list. It's located in Dunfermline in Scotland and has about 1 million square feet, which is almost as big as 14 soccer pitches. Its conveyor belts together have a length of 14 kilometers. Every package goes through a scanner on this conveyor belt to check its label and content, which will lead the package into the building. The title of the largest warehouse in Europe goes to Toulouse in France. Jean-Luc Lagardier plant is used to build the largest commercial airliner, Airbus A380. It was built back in 2003 and is considered to be one of the most modern warehouses in the world. The JLL plant helps manage and complete very short production deadlines for the Airbus A380 model thanks to its futuristic equipment. In the complex, you can also find training centers for Airbus customers and operators, along with headquarters comprising many support and strategic functions. The plant carries 32,000 tons of steel, four times more than the Eiffel Tower. It takes up 1.32 million square feet and has a volume of 199 million cubic feet. Heading back to the States, our next stop, Target Import Warehouse, is located in Washington. This distribution center is the fourth largest building worldwide, having 2 million square feet and a space volume of more than 260 million cubic feet. It was opened in 2003 and now you can find here tons of furniture, toys, clothes or even food. As many say, this is the key place for import of all goods. I really wouldn't mind getting lost in here. Runner-up on our list is John Deere Warehouse in Illinois. 
The company with the deer in their emblem built its colossal 2.6 million square feet facility for distribution in North America. It was opened in 1975 and now ships roughly 8,000 orders per day. John Deere is known for durable agricultural, construction, and forestry machinery. For all of those interested to see more of how this factory works, you can request a guided tour. You would indeed need some help if you wanted to go around this gigantic factory, seeing the size of it. And the top spot takes Boeing Everett Factory, again placed in Washington. This warehouse is not just one of the biggest warehouses in the world, but also one of the largest buildings ever built. At 4.3 million square feet and almost 500 million cubic feet, you could fit here 80 football fields or 172 White Houses. That makes it larger than the entire Disneyland. It's used to assemble Boeing aircraft like Boeing 747 and the new 787 Dreamliner. But that's not all you can find here. This warehouse has its own fire department, seven coffee shops, and bikes to help the employees get around. So which warehouse would you like to visit? Let us know in the comments, leave a like, and hit the subscribe button. Okay, what did you get into this one? Uh -huh, anybody? For me, teacher, I remember the, the, the points most important that I remember is, for example, the number five warehouse is the Amazon. Mm -hmm. And a warehouse has one million square feet. And the number one warehouse that is a Boeing factory and it has, uh, a, I remember that Cade, uh, no sé, no sé cómo se dice. Fits. Um, no, uh, into, the, into the Boeing factory mm -hmm. has uh, 172 white houses. This is very <laughs> <laughs> impressionant for me. And this, this factory, has their fire department station and yeah. it's very it's very big it's stunning right it's a lot a lot of i mean that is a lot of space a lot of things that you do there so ah it's amazing <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> perfect thank you Mayra. any other opinion i think so I take some notes about uh, Tesla, how 10,000 employees mm -hmm. and produce 100 cars in a year. 100,000. One, 100, no, 100,000 cars in a year. Oh my God. That's a lot of cars. Yes. And those are electrical cars, so that's good. I, I was amazing watching the ships warehouse oh my god what is that <laughs> he mentioned that they have 32,000 people 30, 32 yeah 32,000 yeah people mm -hmm. oh, the other um uh, mm -mm. The other that take my attention. Oh, they mentioned that the warehouse in Amazon. Amazon, I love it. <laughs> it's a, it's the equiv equivalent, 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 equi equivalent, like eight soccer fields. Mm -hmm. mm, oh my god! Then um, I like Target. John Deere. John Deere. Uh, yeah. Uh, the factory have 2.6 million square feet. That and the last, uh, oh, like the last, the number one, the Boeing, the Boeing warehouse. I it mentioned that it's like Disneyland. <laughs> Imagine. Disneyland, I, I hear that Disneyland, you, you, you talk the, the trip for Disneyland in one week. 
I don't, I, I listen one week, maybe. Imagine in the warehouse and the boy is like Disneyland. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Amazing. It's very good, right? So it's large, it's huge, it's more than big. Any other opinion, any other comment? It's incredible how the warehouse management service has grown over the years and has become an important business for the economy because the big uh, business need a uh, warehouse management for uh, delivery their product. That is so true. I mean, this is very important. Uh, logistics is very important. And of course, sometimes we forget that there are, I mean, we have warehouses for food, for different things, but also uh, there are warehouses for planes, right? For ships, for crews. So they need also um, a logistics system for them to build and to take everything into the warehouse. So yeah, that is huge actually. Yeah, the warehouse management is uh, one part important that a logistics service. That is true. I mean, uh, it's part of uh, everything. Logistics is one of the most important things in the company. It doesn't matter what kind of company you have. Sometimes we believe that there is no logistics, but if you go and purchase food from uh, a store there uh, on the street, that has logistics. Everything has logistics, right? Good, good. Any other comment? Okay, so if there is no more comments, we're going to continue with the book. So we are still in unit three. I will be able to make suggestions related to warehouse management issues, it says. <laughs> so what issues can we find in a, in a warehouse? What do you think? What issues can we find in a warehouse? Don't have a control with inventory, for example. Yeah, if there is no control on inventory, that is a mess. Right? I mean, I guess that is the worst thing that can happen in a, in a warehouse, definitely. Any other? The required the uh, program of the uh, system of the information for the control. Very good. If the system is not working properly, oh my goodness, that is going to cause a lot of problems. Very good. One more. Economic loss or uh, literal synchronization between all the point of sales. Very good. Yeah, if the departments, they are not well connected, uh, of course, even if one is working fine, uh, the, the other one is going to cause an impact. And at the end, uh, the business is going to, it's not going to run properly, definitely. Okay. It's possible to the human failures due, due to forgetfulness or carelessness. Yeah, actually that is true. Uh, as we were discussing before, it's better to have an automation, to have systems. Uh, so that is going to be better for the efficiency and we with not many mistakes. If you do manual things with people doing something by themselves, yeah, definitely the, the possibility of having some mistakes, of course, is going to increase. That is it's, very, it's very important automatization or process uh, because uh, it's possible losing self and, and a customer to for for any mistake or any error in the process. That is so true. So definitely, yeah, uh, we need to automate uh, as much as we can. 
And of course, people that are also important, but you see, for example, in these warehouses that we just, just saw, there are, um, there were some huge, huge warehouses, but there were not many employees sometimes. So because the systems are very automated, there are some robots, there are many things that they do. Uh, so this is automatic. So it's going to be much better. Okay, so number two, it says, imagine you are a warehouse manager and you are experiencing problems with inventory counts and misplaced products. Both are very big problems, right? Inventory counts and that are not, not good. So you count the inventory and it's not accurate. And misplaced products, meaning that you don't know where they are. Which of the following issues will you solve first? We're going to run the issues from one, least affects the productivity, to five, that the one that most affects the productivity. Okay, and we're going to discuss about that one. So uh, let's read about this one. Nelson, could you please read all the problems? All teach. Yeah, please. Okay, imagine. Lista. Inaccurate. Uh, okay. Inaccurate resending, resending, and purchase order. Lacks lacks of the communication between employee. Lacks of cooperation between department. Sign management. Warehouse warehouse space and organization. Organization. Very good. So we have five different problems. The number five is going to be the worst, the one that affects the most. And the number one is going to be the one that affects the least. So we have inaccurate receipts and purchase orders. So it's not correct what we receive and it's not correct what, uh, what is in the purchase order. Lack of communication between employees. They don't talk to each other. They don't, they don't say the correct things. Lack of cooperation between departments. So one department says, is the warehouse problem? No, is the planning problem? No, is the sales problem? Time management and warehouse space and organization. So the question, we're going to start maybe with the, the worst, the, the one that affects the most. So which one do you believe is the, the one that you need to fix first? or the one that is the worst? The most important, inaccurate receipts and purchase orders. Inaccurate receipts and purchase orders. Why do you believe that is the one that affects the most? Because this is the beginning for, this is the beginning uh, how can I say? This is the beginning to to process. Yeah. Mm. Check. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my god! How can I explain? <laughs> I have the idea, but I can explain. My god! Uh, this is the beginning of the chain to start uh, to introduce in the system. You can receive uh, 10 and the order say 15. You have to be uh, accurate. Yeah, okay. you, have to, you have to do the things uh, with, uh, how do you say, delicadeza. <laughs> delicate. It, it, delicate, yes. Yes, it happens. It happens to us because in the system, in the system have 10 and I only have eight. And then you, you sail and, but I only have eight physically, but the system say 10, oh my God, it's a big, big problem. Yeah. And for me, you have to receive and you have to, to match. The, that you receive and the purchase order. Very good. Perfect. Yeah, actually, that is a very, very bad problem. If you receive things that are not correct, 
I mean, you cannot produce, you cannot do anything. Everything is stopped. Okay, very good. What will be the next? Anybody or everybody agrees what to change? What will be the next one? So inaccurate receipts is number five. What would be number four? Mm, warehouse space and organization. Okay. Warehouse space and organization, why? Because, uh, for example, in the order, um, buy a, a lot of product and you don't have a space, where do you um, keep the product in the warehouse? If you don't have a space, uh, you, you have a, a, a space adequate uh, for needs of company. Okay, very good. Yes, actually, this is one that is very important, right? If the warehouse is not organized, I mean, the inventory is going to get lost. The raw material, we don't know where they are. Uh, the finished products, we don't know where to ship, where to put them. I mean, that is a mess. That is something that definitely is going to affect the whole thing. Good. What will be number three? For me, teacher, is the lack of communication between employees. Okay, employees. Why employees? Talking, of, talking about the warehouse because um happen. It happens to me. Uh, I, I, I am in charge of the uh, inventory in the system. And sometimes my partners receive something and just don't tell me didn't tell me or don't tell me i don't know how can i say and suddenly uh, i i ask because i have a control and i ask what happened uh, somebody gave us this product uh, i have two weeks uh, missing or something like that and and they tell me, oh yes, I received the last the last week. Oh my God, but you don't tell me. Because I have a control, the things that, that are out and I have the papers. Sometimes they they don't they forget to fill the paper, but they receive the product and put in the place, but they don't tell me and don't feel the sometimes, oh my god. The communication uh, is important. That is true. Actually, I believe that that is one of the biggest problems in all companies around the world. I used to work for a German company that was very good, but always, uh, I mean, this problem, uh, I've been working for different kinds of companies and there is always a problem with communication and that causes failures and problems. And the larger the company is, the worse this gets because there are many departments, many people. And I mean, it's, it's, it's a problem. It's a big problem. And of course, this affects a lot between employees. What will be the next one? Number two. Mm, maybe time management. Time management, why? Because you have a, a time specific for need a product received, for example, and you organization a, the time of the day when you receive the product and you have a, a planification uh, when you 
uh, when you have uh, orders, uh, in in what time uh, or what day you receive the the specific product for the company. Very good. Yeah, actually remember that logistics is time and time is money. And if you don't manage time correct, I mean, you're lost, right? So this is going to also cause a big impact in the company. Definitely, it's not going to be good at all. So um, at the end, we have lack of cooperation between departments as the, the listen part. So uh, it might be, it might be. I guess that, that depends on many situations. I mean, uh, these are, general problems but it depends on the size and the kind of the business that we are running that is going to be the impact the real impact into the business so all of those are important we're going to stop for a while and we're going to check the attendance once again so we can check let's see ada patricia linares galdames present teacher good Adriana Stephanie Martinez Flores. Present. Good. Ana Sermi Chavez. Present teacher. Good. Flor de Maria Carballo Ugarte. Present teacher. Good. Gloria Elizabeth Linares Galdames. Here. Good. Guadalupe del Carmen Lopez Flores. Present. Good. Carla Verónica Vázquez de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Lourdes Beatriz Iraeta de Miranda. Present. Good. Mayra Melanie Guevara de Beltrán. Present. Good. Ofelia Orellana Arce. Here teacher. Good. Osmin Baire Solórzano. Present teacher. Good. Pamela Beatriz Posada Reina. Present. Good. Rafael Ernesto González Ventura. Present. Good. Ricardo Alexis Fuentes Rodríguez. Present teacher. Good. Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. Present teacher. Good. Sandra Gladys Méndez Ramírez. William Giovanni Rosales Galvez. Present teacher. Okay. Yancy Lisbeth Hernández Mejía. Zulma Rosaura López García. Present. Good. Nelson Edgardo Sánchez Ramírez. Present teacher. Good. Ana Michelle Guevara. Present. Good. Susana Carolina Hernández Iraeta. Okay. So we are going to continue with the book. We are going to finish this, this page. And then we are going to, we have two more videos to watch that are kind of interesting. And then free practice. So it says building vocabulary. So label the warehousing alternatives to their corresponding definitions. We have drop shipping, public warehouse, private warehouse, direct shipping and contract warehouse. Of course, we are going to read to check what will be the best option for that one. Uh, let's start with, let's see. Adriana, could you please read the first one? Okay, teacher. Uh, number one, this is a method of delivering goods from the supplier to the customer directly. Okay. This is a method of delivering goods from the supplier to the customers directly. Uh, what will be that one, uh, everybody? What will be the correct one? Direct, Direct shipping. shipping. Very good. Direct shipping. So I produce and I go to the customers directly. Good. Perfect. Uh, number two, Ophelia. Okay, This is open and independent opening address or service choose has a store hardening and transport transportation on the basis 
of receive or variable C. Good. So it says it is operated as an independent business offering a range of services such as storage, handling, and transportation on the basis of a fixed or variable fee. What is a fee? Do you remember? Yes, rate or the uh, cost of the service, teacher. Very good. The cost of the service that might be fixed or variable. So what will be the one for this one? Anybody? Mm, it's a difficult one then. Let's read number three and then we go back to the number two. Uh, let's see, Gloria, could you please read number three? Okay, warehouse owned by a third party entity. This warehouse provides especially services in addition to allowing the client to store goods. Good, so this warehouse is owned by a third party entity. So it's like just for the warehouse, you, you can purchase or you can rent space. These warehouses provide specialized services in addition to allowing the client to store goods. So you can go and store goods there. So what would be this one? Do you have an idea? It's a contract warehouse. Contract warehouse, it might be. Yeah, it's possible to be have that one. Okay, let's check number four. Uh, Rafael, could you please read number four? Hello, Rafael. Hi, teacher. Sorry, teacher. Oh, okay. Um. Yeah, so um, it's possible for you to read, Rafael, number four? Yes. Okay. What number? Number four, please. Okay. The retailer does not keep goods in a stock, but instead transfer customer orders and shipment detail to the manufacturer, another retailer or a wholesaler who then ships the good directly to the customer. Okay, so the retailer does not keep goods in stock, but instead transfer customers' orders and shipping details to the manufacturer, another retailer or a wholesaler who then ships the goods directly to the customer. What do you think is this? Is drop shipping. Sorry? Drop shipping? Drop shipping, yes, that is it. Very good. Nice. So number five is going to be for uh, let's see, let's see. Who else is? Um Sandra, please. Five. Yes, please. It is a storage facility that is open to the general public. Why is the kind of warehouse is used by private individuals? They are also used by companies of small to medium size to store their goods safely. Good. So this is a store facility that is open to general public. I guess here we know <laughs> the name. While this kind of warehouse is used by private individuals, they are all also used by companies of small to medium size to store their goods safely. Which one private. is this one? Private. Private. Do you think it's private? Private. Okay, it says that it's open to the general public. Mm, public warehouse. That is a public warehouse. Very good. 
Okay, so let's go back to number two. How is going to be number two? Or oh, number three, I don't remember which one is the one that we didn't get. Sure. Warehouse. Okay. Number two. number two, so it's going to be? Private warehouse. Private warehouse, very good. That's the only one that is missing. Good. Uh, let me see. Um, we're going to check this grammar tomorrow. We're going to see some videos. Let me see, if, um, hold on. I need to check something for you to listen to the videos. Oh, this is a good one. Let's see. And it's going to be like this. Okay. Okay, this is a very good one. So let's check what is going on on this one. Let's pay attention. Remember that at the end, we're going to uh, provide comments and feedback on this.
Okay, comments about this one. What do you think? These are examples of the artificial intelligence in this process. For example, the, the robot, the number one, in how the robot uh, select the specific, uh, maybe the classification, the, the Recy rec recyclable, how do you say recyclable? Recyclable, Recy yeah. Recyclable, recyclable uh, materials. But is it required a, a lot of a lot of in investment because this technology is very expensive because it's high technology. Yeah, definitely. This is high technology. So the robots, the advantage of having robots is that they don't go to the restroom, they don't eat, they don't, I mean, it's just to put in maintenance and, and that's it, right? They can work forever. So that is the advantage. And uh, of course, yeah, it's very, very expensive. I mean, if, if it's very expensive and sometimes people, they don't want to invest in a system that is something like normal, probably it's going to be more difficult to invest in a robot, right? But it, they are very good. They are very good. Very nice. Any other opinion? Uh, uh, is is good and is bad uh, for the human. No employees in the company. Uh, only mobile robots. Uh, they are everywhere. That is true. I mean, there is an impact for people, right? Because the robot, they can work, as we say, forever. Uh, but there will be maybe one, two or three people that are not going to be hired anymore. So, yeah, that is true. Yeah. Any other opinion? Well, I agree and say, uh, uh, Mr. Austin, because the company no no longer hire human uh, person because they sell a lot of money for the business because the investment uh, recover in two years or five years, but uh, they they are the planification. Uh, and the investment in in them the three or four i the recovery investment all is um, save the lot of money very good perfect yeah uh, is yeah probably in the future if by any chance there are many robots in the plant might be an impact for humans so if right now is difficult to to have a job right so it may be difficult but i believe it's very expensive by now it's not going to be very very soon good any other opinion i was wondering teacher how the number two uh the squid mm -hmm. no no what package is going to take uh, well, as I understand, there is like a system and the robot is is connected to the system. So you're from the computer, you send the order. Oh, okay, I send, so you send the order. I need this Amazing. and they are able to see in the system where it's located. So they go, go up and look for Amazing. that. Actually, that is for me the best. Yeah, for me too, the best. Oh, yeah, man. it's special. <laughs> yeah, it's nice, nice. Yes, yeah, it's I mean, nice. That, that nice. was, <laughs> I would like yeah, to have the, one of those. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would like to have one of these. The, and the last one, the super pick, pick the super pick. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, they say that uh, you can you can have a system that you can see in the cloud. It's nice the, too. Very nice, yeah. yeah because it's, uh -huh. the best for me is the squid. Yeah, for me too. I mean, it, it can go up and move in the, to yeah, the, move in the, the right. way that you 
Oh my oh, God. That's amazing. Also, the the shelter is uh, especially for this for this robot. Yeah, and yeah. You, you have to invest in the robot and the shelters to to adapt to, to the movement. That is true. So it's the whole warehouse has to be adapted, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. But actually, that is that is very very good. Yes. I really like that one. That was amazing. Yes. Nice. Okay. Any other, or we move on to the next one? Okay. The next video is about the whole process. I mean, it's not only the warehouse, but the the whole process on uh, pineapple juice. So let's check into that one and provide opinion at the end.
Okay, what do you think about these procedures, automation and everything like that? Uh -huh, anybody? The my majority is right, teacher. Yeah. The majority for this year. The majority, the activities, um, are um, executing for a automatical process. Uh, this meaning. Minimum or, or, or how do you say null teacher? Null. Null. Uh, the intervention of the human in the process is minimum. Minimum. But the line of, line of production is uh, now it is common that the line of the production. Uh, that uh, the technology, uh, how do you say, the, the, the process in general is, is done for automatic, uh, or is, is done for machines. Yeah. Uh, for example, during the process, uh, there is the system of the traffic light. When the, the light is red, it's because the specific uh, product has a uh, um, wrong or mistake or... Yeah. It's, it's, not, but, it's not good, not good, not good quality, right? Yes, not the, for the quality, for the quality, the specific, because it's all, all the process is programmed for, for that. But insist, it's a lot of investment for, for design of the line of the production. That is true. I mean, this level of automation is very high, but it's very expensive. Because as you say, the most of the work is done by machines, right? I mean, only the parts that machines cannot do them, for example, to go to the, to the, uh, to the plantation and get, uh, I mean, that is kind of difficult for machines, but, but the rest of the procedure is going to be automated, right? Yes, the, the other advantage is that the waste is, is meaning the waste in the process because the, the machine has the specific order the how must to cut the fruit, the quantity, the the all the, the waste is minimum. Exactly. Yes. In, yeah, in logistics, remember that that is one of the most important things, right? no waste, no waste of product, no waste of time, no waste of money. So I guess at the end, uh, they, they get the most, they maximize the resources. So that is a very good thing, very nice. Any other opinion? The process teacher of product is very important and also, quality control is exactly yeah is 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 great. That is true. As you see there, there is quality, right? There is there are people that are checking that everything is going well. Very good, perfect. Any other any other comment or opinion? Where uh, informatic. 
y dice the develop the algorithm uh, the is that the uh, sign start the first process second uh, or process uh, until the finish is good is is always uh, uh, amazing yeah yeah it's, it's fantastic right the way they they do the whole thing because it's, it's it's not an automation of one step only it's not only in the warehouse it's the whole production automation so that is amazing good any other comment i was checking also that um there is no sugar there, right? Everything is natural. That was very good. I, I mean, when we go to the supermarket and we read the label about juices, sometimes we say, ah, this, go, this is not natural. I mean, this is, this is uh, with chemicals and things like that. But at least in this process, we didn't see anything like that one, right? So it was, it was a very good thing. This is a real. Nature but pineapple juice, <laughs> <laughs> but it's expensive, teacher. <laughs> Maybe I mean, yeah. I I I always I always I think uh, why is don don natural? Yeah, maybe I mean, if we go and buy. I don't know, the juices that we purchase here, I mean, maybe those are not natural, right? Definitely. To see, to see process is, uh, uh, is, uh, um, gray, gray, uh, and process is, is, is fantastic. And, yeah. And, it's good. Yeah, actually, it's a very good process. I mean, I, I watched the video and I thought, I'm, I mean, this is a very good thing, right? Is uh, the procedure, it was kind of natural. It's very expensive because it's not only one machine. There are many machines. It's so, more, uh, if uh, more important is uh, process natural, very important. That is good. That is very important. Yes. I mean, because customers were happy when something is natural, right? When you get yes. actually about the fruit, I mean, if you see that, is is the fruit the only Super natural? Oh. Yeah. So that is that is a very good thing. Um, and also another thing that I was thinking is that, yeah, the investment is very very expensive, uh, and the maintenance as well. I mean, imagine that one machine is broken. Everything stopped, right? We can't do anything. So I believe that they have engineers and mechanics there. So if something happens, they have to go and check what's the going on. The maintenance of these machines, oh my God. How many times in it's a month? It's close. Mm -hmm. Yes. Maintenance of this machine. Yes. Yeah, it should be very expensive, I guess. And, very... and cleaning, and cleaning and quality. The cleaning, yeah. yeah, that is true. Cleaning and the, I mean, yeah, it, it's not that easy. But of course, automation is something very good. Yeah, if companies, they have the money, why not? I like the way that they test test the, 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 the juice and the, the microscope. I don't know why, but they put in the microscope and then take a drink. I like this. <laughs> that was very good. Yeah, yeah, I guess that the thing is that depending on where you are located, I mean, in the US, oh, the yeah. health, the health um, laws, they protect a lot of uh, the customers. So sometimes mm -hmm. that happens. Sometimes they are um, involved in that kind of situations. Uh, in El Salvador, for example, there is not that much. I mean, uh, yeah, I believe that is is kind of healthy, but not that healthy, right? Because something can happen in the market when the the product is in the market, and the people is going to demand the company, imagine, and they have to be carefully. 
so that is it. It's not only about health. It's not only about the procedures. It's, it's to guarantee that they are not going to be sued. Yeah. Very good. It was very nice. So, uh, well, okay, we're going to, uh, we have just a few more minutes, but we're going to do free practice. Um, tomorrow is going to be normal schedule, okay? It's going to be only two hours. And remember that on Monday, no class. On Tuesday, no class. On Wednesday, no class. On Thursday, no class. But on Friday, no class. So uh, all the week, no class. But the other week, yes, please don't forget about me, okay? Please come to the class. That's very important. So one week is the one that we're going to be off. And the other week, we're going to finish with the last unit. Uh, and I mean, we're going to finish the things that we have to. Uh, also remember that the last the last day uh, of the class, we're going to fill the, uh, the survey, the INSAFORP survey, right? You have the experience already. So you know what is this about, but we need to do it together. Remember that one. That is something that we should do together. Okay, so free practice, um, what do you want to talk about? Now it's going to be Groupal. For example, I was going to ask you, we saw so many good robots today. Do you believe that in the future there will be a lot of robots for many things? What do you think? Yes, teacher, because the, the artificial intelligence now is a topic that is um, in develop, develop, okay. development in, in Asia, in China, in Japan. There are more a, uses in the artificial intelligence in, in different activities, in the ordinary activities uh, for, the, for the people. In my opinion, is close that uh, in the future, we, we have more access to the artificial intelligence. Okay, very good. Yeah, I mean, uh, technology is being advancing a lot, right? And if we implement that one into mach machinery, yeah, I guess it's possible, right? It's possible. Any other opinion on this? Yes, teacher, I think in the future it's possible the robots have control every work in the company and human are out. Yeah. It's a, pro it's a problem for the human. Yeah. Yeah, we need to work as influencers in Instagram, right? Because they will be working at the factories. <laughs> oh my God. I think that maybe not robots, but maybe more automa automa automat say <laughs> Automation, systems. okay. Automate, yeah, automation systems, I think. Maybe nowadays you see when you call an enterprise, the recording machine, oh my God, you have to be patient with this. Maybe some kind of this, mm -hmm. but robots, mm, I don't think so. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, that actually that is happening already that there are many automation, there are many things that we are going to be able to, to do, to build. And um, for example, um, artificial intelligence or machine learning. I mean, uh, if you remember whenever you, maybe you are just saying to a friend, I would like to have a new washing machine. And then when you are, looking in Google, it says, hey, here are new products, new washer machines. So that is machine learning. They always listening and there is an algorithm that is going to show you exactly what you are looking for. 
So now exists that, that part, right? But nowadays, also, I was remembering, uh, many people use drones. Drones can be a robot? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it could many, be. Many people use drones and drones uh, that are, uh, uh, how do you say, uh, for me, are spectacular because you can make the, you can take a, 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 an event in, in the real time. You send the drone and you put the video and all the people is looking what happened in a real time. That is true. That is true. Teacher, for example, the smartphone, uh, 20 years ago, we now the 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 all the all functions the smartphone and now it's incredible the the old functions but 20 years ago this for 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 us is it uh, there was a I don't know imagination, but now, for example, the, the use of the holograms for the cell phone is technology is close for the for the new phone, smartphone. Okay. Imagine a program meta. I'm sorry, could you please repeat? A program meta uh, the 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 Facebook is uh, artificial. artificial. Yeah, that is true. That is uh, artificial intelligence. It's so new, it's new for the humans. That is true. So algorithms that they are using right now they are very advanced uh, in many ways. Advanced, yes. Many in many ways. I remember I uh, used some years ago. I don't remember exactly which brand was, but I don't know if you read that that piece of news that uh, they say that the TVs, there was a shoot because they say that the smart TVs, they were able to listen to you and to record you, even if the TV was off. So uh, there was a scandal and people were saying, how is that possible? I mean, my privacy and many things. Uh, and that's why sometimes they change their terms and conditions, right? Sometimes you see that they launch, I don't know, YouTube and Google and whatever. Uh, well, we change our terms and conditions, blah, blah, blah. blah. And, and the problem is that if you don't accept that, you can use that. So if you want to use, you need to accept. And when you accept, you are giving off your privacy and the rights to do one or other thing. So uh, it's kind of a, a problem. But also, I mean, it's a solution and also it's a problem, right? Because they use our information for their own benefit. And we're here just clicking and doing so many things. At the end, well, uh, it's just information. And uh, I believe that it's, it's better for, for us to live with the technology. But some people, they do not agree on this kind of situation. So it's, uh, it's a little bit complicated, actually. Okay, what else do you believe is going to happen in the future? For example, my, I, I really would like to see flying cars. I know that in some countries they are building drones for people. Those are flying cars already, right? And the problem that they have by now is that the flying time is not that much because batteries are very expensive and they cannot have a lot of batteries to that one because it's going to be very heavy. But in the future, I mean, now you know that on the cell phones, you have a lot of power and they last two, three days without charging. So maybe in the future, if they find a very good way of energy, I believe that based in drones, we're going to have flying cars. That would be fantastic. What do you think about? I can imagine that teacher flying cars. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I believe that the technology is going to exist, but maybe it's not going to be for everybody because, yeah. I mean, you see in the news that they are fighting each other in the, in the highway. Yeah. 
Yeah, technology teacher is amazing. Also in the movie. In the movies, oh my God. Uh, in the Star Wars movies, how they cre recreate the, the Princess Leia. Imagine. Yeah. Also in the in the Mandalorian, no? In the Boba Fett series, mm -hmm. they recreate uh, Luke Skywalker, John. Oh yeah. my God. It was amazing. <laughs> It was amazing. Technology is amazing. Yeah, that is true. Technology nowadays, I mean, is, is very nice um, and it's moving very fast because, I mean, people are investing. I mean, there are people, there are people sitting down thinking how they can improve systems and, and the power or, and cameras and many things. So uh, technology is moving in many ways. Right. I imagine that we're here sitting down in Zoom with we are recording this video conference. We're speaking three hours with no problems. You are far away. I mean, two years ago or three years ago, I can't imagine that. Yeah, that is not possible. Right? It was not possible. So and now I mean, sometimes in the cell phones that we have, there is a lot of technology, but we don't know what to do with that one. I mean, we take pictures, we make calls, and we check the Facebook, and that's it. Maybe WhatsApp. But there are many things that we can do. Many, many things with that. With the, that's why it's a smart, a smart cell phone, right? Because there are many, many, many things that we can do. Not only those things that we usually do, that the common things, but there are many, many things. So let's see what happens. Let's see what happens maybe in five years. Around 2030, I guess it's going to be interesting to check. Of course, there are some other things that are changing in a bad way, like values, like the way that society is moving on, right? Uh, in a way that, for example, somebody that uh, is an influencer has a lot of money and somebody that is an engineer has to work very hard just to pay the debt. So. I mean, that is kind of crazy. The way that many people uh, inclined to uh, not a, a real career like a doctor or engineer, they prefer to do program system. I don't know. It's, it's okay, but uh, the world needs uh, science people. That is true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you know, I believe that not everything is lost. For example, I have a son, he is 15 years old. And uh, by himself, because I, I taught some things when he was a kid, but by himself, he also is very interested in science. And he's very into that one. Sometimes we do some experiments. We watch channels in YouTube about science, about stars and about the, the planet and relativity and things like that. So he's very into that one. And he's here in El Salvador, I mean. Um, so there are people that they are interested in these kind of things. I know that there are other people that maybe the most of the people are, are not like that. But there are people that they are interested in knowing and understanding things. So that is very good. So maybe there are not a few people, but there are people at least. So that is good. Good, my friends, it was a very long and very nice class today. So I'm going to check the um, attendance and then we're going to see you tomorrow, of course. So, Ada Patricia Linares Galdamez. Present teacher. Good. Adriana Stephanie Martinez Flores. Present. Good. Ana Selmi Chavez. Present teacher. Good. Flor de Maria Carballo Ugarte. Present. Good. Gloria Elizabeth Linares Galdames. Here. Good. Guadalupe del Carmen López Flores. Carla Verónica Vázquez de Rivas. Present. Good. Lourdes Beatriz Iraeta de Miranda. Mayra. I'm here, teacher. Good, thank you. Mayra Melanie Guevara de Beltrán. I'm here. Present, teacher. Good. Ophelia Orellana Arce. Here, teacher. Good. 
Osmin Baire Solórzano. Present teacher, good night. Good night. Pamela Beatriz Posada Reina. Good night, present. Good night. Rafael Ernesto González Ventura. Present, good night. Good night. Ricardo Alexis Fuentes Rodríguez. Present teacher. Good. Rosa Elena Salgado de Serrano. Present teacher. Good. Sandra Gladys Méndez Ramírez. Present teacher. Good. William Giovanni Rosales Galvez. Yancy Lisbeth Hernández Mejía. Zulma Rosaura López García. Present. Nelson Edgardo Sánchez Ramírez. Present teacher. For you is the 101 today, Nelson. Today? Yes. Wow. I don't know. No? <laughs> no. No, because the I I think the, the other week. <laughs> yeah. I, I I don't know. Uh, I know say I don't I know the, the day me I uh, I what uh, I don't miss, I don't know the, the day the face to face. Uh, but can you do it today? Uh, is I have a activity. Okay. Class. Okay. Good. That's good. So Anna Michelle Guevara. Present. Good. Susana Carolina Hernandez Iraita. Present. Okay, Susana. So we're going to be there in the 101 today, okay? Good. Okay. Perfect. So my friends, it was a pleasure to be with you. It was a very long day, but tomorrow is Friday. So rest very well. See you tomorrow. Have a good night. Dream in English. And well, see you tomorrow. Thank you, teacher. See you, Bye. teacher. Good night. Thank you. Good, good night. Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye. Hello, Susana. How are you? Good. Thank you. Very well. Nice to meet you. And uh, well, it's a pleasure to be here with you. Let me. Uh, well, I know that you have experience in the one on ones, of course. Uh, yes. So the first question is, how do you feel that we are moving in the English class? So do you feel that you're learning, you're getting vocabulary? How do you feel? I like, I like, how do you impart the class? I really like, it's different. And I think the, the how do you say advance? The advance? advance? Mm -hmm. Okay, the advance we have is, is good. And I feel, I feel I understand more. But Baby. sometimes, sometimes I think the, the time is difficult. I coming very tired. Sometimes only listen. Yeah, I know. I know that sometimes it's difficult and, uh, but it's very good to make the effort, right? To be here because, um, if it's not at this time, I guess it won't be possible, but it's a very good thing. It's a very good thing that you are moving on. Um, let me ask you, do you have any questions about the topics that we have checked? Any, anything? No, I think, no, I think the, this topic is very, it would have a very information and we'll see case reels. I think it's, it's more easy. It, yeah, it's more easy than other other topics and other modules. I really mm -hmm. like it. Yes. That's very good. That's very nice. Yeah, I believe that uh, the topic is not for everybody. Some people are not like into the logistics, but that's what I try to bring videos uh, and some other information. Yes. So we have more vocabulary and, and a different approach, right, to the, to the class. Yes, but I really like, I like the methodology, the use. I understand. I, in the beginning, I, I think, oh my God, I understand nothing. Really? But yes, but other days, I really like it. Very good. Really like that's very nice. I'm very happy that now you're moving on and that you are learning a little bit more. Sometimes that happens, we, do, we just need to practice, right? So that, that is it. Yes, yes. Um, 
is not the same when you talking, when you write, and the activity you make us with, right? I really like it. Cuando dictó, no sé cómo se dice el dictado. The dictation. Okay, this is very good. I really like it, that. Actually, we're going to do another one. I don't remember if it's tomorrow or next week, but we're going to do another one. Okay, yes. Yeah, that is a very good thing because then you need to pay attention and try to understand not only the words, but the context, right, of everything. Yes, I think in the, when you say we don't need to traduce the words, I think that is very important, but only you, well, in my case, I learn with, with the time because at the beginning I, I can do that. But, uh, but today is more easy. Yeah, that is true, that happens. I mean, I guess it's normal that at the beginning you are translating, you're trying to understand the words and try to change in, in your mind. But the good thing is that there comes a time when you don't do that anymore. You just yes. speak and that's it, right? And it's important we learn many, many vocabulary. No more words. That is true. Vocabulary is important so we can try to use this new vocabulary and try to, uh, to express in different ways. You know, mm -hmm. there are many ways for you to express. There are many ways for you to say something. Yes, I think it's true. Yeah, very good, perfect. And also remember that if you have any questions, you can chat with me directly or uh, on the group and it will be a pleasure to help you out. So uh, do you have any other question, anything else? No, other activity, really like it. If when you you make the uh, phrase, phrase, no, ¿cómo uh -huh. se dice phrase? Right. When, when uh -huh. okay, when talking very quickly, Ah, okay, yeah, the fluency. Okay, yes, I think it's very good. I really okay. like it, that too. Very good. So yeah, I sometimes I try to bring something different because I, I want that. I like to, 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 to challenge the students, right? So that is a very good thing. Okay, thank you. And other, uh, other thing is the platform. Okay. Everything happened in other models always have a inconvenient with that. Oh, really? Yes, yes. Okay, but now uh, everything is fine. No, I, can I talk to you in Spanish? On the yeah, of course. yeah, of course. O sea, no, he visto, eh, hay unos ejercicios que están, que no están buenos. Sí, tiene razón, ya los Entonces, reporté. Sí. Uh -huh. Ajá, pero todavía no están arreglados, porque yo igual estaba checando y eso no te permite avanzar. Y eso sí, la, sí es repetitivo, uh, ella ha sido así en todos los módulos. Siempre uh, hay algo que, que la indicación no es muy clara, o sea, o falta algo. Pues. Entonces, sí, no podemos ir al día con ciertas actividades. Ah, uh, ok. Perfecto. Cualquier uh -huh. cosa, yo ya reporté, creo que había dos eh, problemas que siempre los, los tiraba mal. Había uno que lo tiraba mal y el otro que estaban unidas dos preguntas, eso ya lo reporté. Pero cualquier cosa me avisa, me escribe y pues estamos para ello. Y hay una calificación que, que le falta una pregunta, hay una tarea que le falta una pregunta. Uh -huh. Creo que es el que está unido, que entonces esa la, la, la hace como una. La que pero... le falta el dos. Ajá. Ajá, ajá. ajá. Sí, y el otro, hay otra que igual, que una oración por demás queda, no queda buena. Sí, haga lo que haga, no queda bueno algo, tiene sí, malo. Ahí. Eso, eso creo que ya, eso fue al inicio y no se ha corregido. Entonces ya nos queda una semana y vamos a quedar igual devaluados en esta actividad. Es lo único. Ok, perfecto. Sí, eso ya lo reporté. Es, bueno, voy a volver a preguntar a ver qué me dice. Ok. Ok, ok. Only that. Perfect. Susana, it was a pleasure to be here with you. Have a very good night and see you tomorrow. Yeah, see you tomorrow. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Bye-bye.